PM Modi's US 5.5 lakh crore river linking project to deal with droughts, floods in India. Why interlinking of rivers is an urgent need at the moment. It is being said that billion dollar river linking project is a disaster in waiting. Do you agree with it? Do you think the massive river interlinking project flawed in its vision? What are the key benefits of river interlinking? GS Paper 1, changes in critical geographical features including water bodies and ice caps. What is the context about? Prime Minister Nahandra Modi's ambitious Rs 5.5 lakh crore rivers interlink plan is a large-scale civil engineering project that aims to link rivers through a network of reservoirs and canals across India. The mission of this program is to ensure greater equity in the distribution of water by enhancing its availability in drought-prone and ranged areas. Despite opposition from environmentalists, tiger lovers and a former royal family, Modi has personally pushed through clearances for the first phase of the project. Why interlinking of rivers is an urgent need at the moment. The population of India is expected to increase to 150-180 crores by the year 2050 and that means the requirement of food grains will go up to about 450 million tons. To meet this requirement, the irrigation potential in the country should be scaled up to 160 million hectares for all crops by 2050. The idea behind interlinking of rivers is to deal with the problem of drought and floods afflicting different parts of the country, while decreasing farmers' dependency on uncertain monsoon rains. Beyond water security, the project is also seen to offer potential benefits to transport infrastructure through navigation, as well as to broadening income sources in rural areas through fish farming. The National Perspective Plan envisions about 150 million acre feet MAF, or 185 billion cubic meters of water storage along with building interlinks. It is being said that billion dollar river linking project is a disaster in waiting. Do you agree with it? The river linking critics insist that the project is built on bad science and an outdated understanding of water systems and water management. Specifically, the concept of surplus and deficit river basins, which is at the core of the river linking project, is contested. A study has found that rainfall has decreased over the years by more than 10% even in river basins that once had a surplus, such as those of the Mohanadi and the Godavari. There can be simultaneous flooding and drying up of river basins that are proposed to be linked. Do you think the massive river interlinking project flawed in its vision? The project seems to view the river as a unidimensional water pipeline, in fact, an entire ecosystem, and any changes to its natural course will have an impact on all the flora and fauna, the wetlands and the floodplains that are intricately linked to the river system. Moreover, water is a state subject in India, and even though the centre is empowered to bring an interstate river under its control to serve the national interest, it has effectively never done so owing to enormous resistance from the states. There are political challenges as well. Water transfer and water sharing are sensitive subjects that have already spawned century-long disputes. River linking critics insist that the project is built on bad science and an outdated understanding of water systems and water management. Specifically, the concept of surplus and deficit river basins, which is at the core of the river linking project, is contested. The amount of land required to construct diverting canals will be huge. Considering the problems of acquisition, how will the government propose to acquire that land? 
Many irrigation projects have been stalled in India because of the detrimental effects on the environment that construction of large reservoirs and dams beget. River linking offers three key benefits. It will irrigate about 87 million acres of farmland, control floods, and generate 34 gigawatts of hydroelectric power. These are tantalizing prospects. India's rain-fed farms are forever hostage to the vagaries of nature, so much so that even one bad monsoon has a direct and debilitating economic impact. At the same time, simultaneous floods and droughts in different parts of the country continue to wreak havoc, destroying the lives and livelihoods of millions. India also desperately needs clean energy to fuel its development processes and if river water can be leveraged and redirected to serve these purposes, that's an option worth exploring.